Uno, piña colada, por favor. Dos say, piña colada. Wait, say, hang on, say por favor again. Por favor. Por, you're saying pavor almost. I don't know what it is. Pavor. Pavor. Por Pavor. Pavor. Por pavor. Four. <laughs> With an F, not a P. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Drum and Drummer, a podcast focused on drums, drumming and drummers. I'm George Pickering and that's Ben Winty and we are both professional drummers in this business we call music. So stick around and join us as we pass the time whilst trying to stay in time. Well, I'm not swallowing seawater, so this is actually <laughs> far easier. Now I'm back from holiday, mate. Yeah. How was it? Where did you go? Well, we went to Lanzarote. Why? Well, I, I just for, uh, you know, new listeners to yes. start today. Um, <laughs> Odd place to start. Did you have a nice time? I did, thank you. Very relaxing. Yeah. Journey out there was smooth as butter. <laughs> apart from my mum fell over at the airport. <laughs> where for a split second I thought, that's holiday over. Yeah, I'm only laughing. Not, not even check the luggage in. <laughs> yeah, I'm not laughing at your mum falling out. I was laughing because you said smoothly and I was like, I, I recall he said that his mum <laughs> fell over. Aside from that, that scare yeah. scare tactic that Anne threw in there of let's just see yeah. how resilient I am to uh to gravity. Yeah. Um I mean that all smooth, lovely villa. Been nice. to that place before and just relaxed, swam mm. in the pool, sat in the hot tub, mm. ate very good food, mm. uh drank what? pina coladas. What was your favourite meal? Well, we'd go to one of my favourite restaurants wasn't as good as it used to be. Ah, that's a shame. In what but way? Food? Just atmosphere. Atmosphere's good atmosphere. They've got good good staff. There's a lot of good staff out there. Mm. You know, we, we knew it's on like it's like the mid level of restaurants there. Yeah. It's, it's cheap and cheerful. Yeah. But then we went to Mama Rosa's, which we've been <laughs> to before. They've had a major upgrade. Have they? And the food was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> so I had a lovely uh Hawaiian pizza. Mm. That was just like, yeah, this is just this is perfection. Yeah. And you know, pina colada on the side. Yeah. Lovely stuff. And it adds to it when the weather's nice. Yeah, and you're sat outside. Yeah. Watching the sunset over the sort of harbour. Yeah. You know, the sort of bay. Yeah. Of Playa Blanca. Mm. Um so yeah, it's just lovely. I walked up a volcano. Right. So, was it active? Nah. Did you feel active walking up it? Um, it wasn't like that far or that high. Maybe it took yeah. like 40 minutes to get up there. But got up there and Dad went to take a photo. And he was... I have a bit of a fear of heights. Yeah. I'm fine in an aeroplane. Mm. And it was very windy up there. And I, I mm. got up the top and I was like, I'm just going to sit down. Cause, and then I was like, I'm getting a little bit of the wobbly legs. Yeah, and Dad was taking photos, and he was going a little bit too close. I'd, what I'd describe as a little bit too close to the edge, and then he put his like moved to the side, and his foot slipped on like the gravel. Oh, and I was like, Can yeah, you, you know, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> how high? How high? You don't know point? how high actually. Not not you know, but high I'd, enough. I'd say yeah, high enough. It's like if he goes over, yeah, you know, yeah. He's rolling down quite a way. <laughs> and I don't know what air ambulance is in Spanish. No. But, no, it was very nice, thank you. And then very smooth journey back. Lovely. And, uh, I don't know, it's weird because I'm, I'm back at work now. Yeah. And it's like, uh, there's just so much to catch up on and so much to sort of do. But it's that weird concept of time. Like, oh, when I was, you get to a sweet point in the holiday, you're like, I feel mm. like I've been here for ages, but there's yeah. still lots of holiday left. Yeah. And the clock felt like it was going slowly. And like, this is lovely. Yeah. And then, now it's Monday. I haven't yeah. worked. And it's been like five days since I've been back. And yeah. It's like, oh, okay. But I do I feel that. refreshed. Oh, that's good. I, do I feel hate like, cool, of... I'm up for some work now. You know? Yeah. You know when you get to the end of a holiday and you start to envy yourself at the start of the holiday? You're like, oh, <laughs> First day you had it holiday, so good. George. Yeah, he yeah. had no clue. He had this much time, and now it's all gone. And uh, I, I do find it like slightly bizarre. Some, and it's not. This isn't anything groundbreaking at all. This is probably me just being an idiot. 
but it was like we went we left at like taxi came at like quarter to four in the afternoon to take us to the airport mm. and then nine hours later i'm at home yeah it's it just yeah. feels i know exactly what it doesn't you mean. feel like it should be that quick no in a way because it's not, not close it's a yeah. four-hour flight so it's like but i've just done door to door in nine hours yeah no but i know the, exactly but the time gets broken up doesn't it like taxi and then check in and you wait at the airport then you're on the plane and you get out and then you drive home and you're like i'm just like oh that's it's mental. yeah no, i not. had one at christmas when i came back from france and I, f- I can't remember what time the flight was but i think let's say it was 7 a.m but france is an hour ahead so you lose an hour and then mm. i can't remember what time i got back to england but i know i got back to my flat at about half nine in the morning so I walked into my door at half nine and then I was like dropping my stuff. And then my housemate came out of his room. He just woken up and he's like, Hey, I was like, all right, all right, how are you doing? You know? And I was just like at 5 a.m. I woke up in France, in the South of France, <laughs> 5 a.m. this morning. And now it's half nine a.m. And I'm back in Brighton. And that felt really weird. I mean, it was like five hours technically, but in a way I was like, no, it's not. It's, four hours you know yeah but um yeah it is strange but my first bit of work back was a decade gig here's the segue there you go yeah lovely lovely segue did the, the creator uh, of the segue die on a segue did he I think he drove it off a cliff what an idiot um yeah we had a decade did gig. you hear about i gotta say this <laughs> did you hear about the uh the man that created the usb stick um, he died recently, actually, and they actually put him in the ground the wrong way up, so they had to turn him around to put him in again. There you Good. go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, we had a decade gig in Guildford, <laughs> <laughs> and it was slightly odd. It was odd because it was at the boiler because room in Guildford. People were dancing because <laughs> <laughs> there was people who gave a shit. Yeah, no, it was at the boiler room in Guildford, which is like a proper sort of gig venue mm. but we were there in the capacity of function bands so it yeah. wasn't a wedding it was a private nope. it was a birthday party and so we used the venues yeah in-house pa lights and there was a sound engineer yeah which to us is a luxury yeah but it was weird being in a venue like that but then playing a decade set yeah it was covers and not being but it we were all a bit like oh this is mixed yeah. emotions because yeah. this is like a I say toilet venue respectfully. Yeah. Like a venue on the circuit, you know, a small venue Mm. on the circuit. And we're like set, only loading in our instruments and then got to fucking park the car miles Mm. away because there's no parking, you know. Mm. And as a sound engineer, and then you're just like, oh, this so feels like an originals gig, but we're going to play Valerie. Yeah, because I I feel like only original bands play there. And so... Well, we did the bar get a bigger, I don't know, amount of money that well, night? Well, I thought with, this, with the sound engineer, I was thinking, what, sh- what does she think? Yeah. Because is she like, you know, for her career as a sound engineer, live sound engineer, she probably wants to go up the scale and work bigger venues, bigger mm. bands. And it's, it's to her, is she like, oh, it's a fucking covers band? Yeah. Uh, did you get the impression she didn't like us? Yeah, instantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um... And, and I, well, I think with the sound thing, it's like, well, we're so used to now doing our own in-ears on the, the Behringer X-Airs, mm. and we couldn't do that. We had yeah. our in-ears run, but she she was controlling what was in there. So you, you're like having to go backwards a bit and yeah. like ask her for tweaks in your headphones. And it was that classic, like, oh, could I have my, you know, I asked, could I have my vocals down a little bit? Mm. And then they were put down, and it's like, oh, now I can't hear them. I, need them back up. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, I'm really sorry, but can you yeah. get back to where they were? And it's yeah. that thing of like, I, I must happen that sound engineers get so pissed off with bands when mm. they ask for things that they're like, I'll show you how little you want. Yeah. And then they turn it all the way down. You're like, well, no, just yeah. <laughs> just turn it down a little bit. Don't yeah. make a point of it. I don't know. Would it have been better if, I haven't thought about this, but if we did our did whatever what we usually do is just us four in charge of everything but it was in that venue do you know what i mean yeah i know what you mean like, i i think I, I i quite liked the luxury of not having to take a pa and oh i loved it and yeah. doing that 
And I think there was when we were sound checking, she, you know, I, I mean, my toms were mic'd up. Mm. What an absolute treat. Yeah. Tom's going through the PA, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but then because we were on in ears, she was like, oh, I suppose you want me to mic up the cymbals and stuff for your in ears. I was like, mm. nah, it's okay. Yeah. Because I, I guess as well, it's like, we don't, we don't normally run through rigs like this and no, have Tom's mic'd no. up. Like, so, and also as well, my in ears aren't ones that go all the way in your ear. Like, they don't really, blo- I just use earbuds. Yeah. So it's like, I can still hear my drums. Like, it's not cutting out everything. Yeah. Do you know how I, here's how I, I'm sort of thinking about it now. It's almost like if you think about it, like for originals gigs at, yeah, respectfully, a toilet venue, there's so much good stuff to make it sound great. And then in the kindest way, there might only be 10 people there. Whereas function bands can have the worst gear, but then do a very professional gig mm. to like more people i don't know it, it is it's just a very it's just such a very different yeah. different situation to be in of like yeah we're in a proper gig venue yeah but, but you're not in one of your bands yeah one of your original band also having that metal gate in front of the stage oh please i love it yeah proper crowd barrier yeah crowd barrier i want one yeah <laughs> to take to every wedding <laughs> yeah it was, was a tiny little stage door wasn't it Tiny little stage door. Yeah. Very small. Mm. Yeah, to be but like what, a hobbit door. Um I just I just it, I quite enjoyed it. I loved it. Because we'd go up to the green room mm. when we weren't playing and it was it felt like an original gig because then it was like we sound checked and there's no one in the venue because it's a private party, not a wedding. Yeah. And we sound checked and then it's like got some food and they had this little food shack outside and I had a lovely Rocky Mountain burger. Yeah, yours looked good. Oh, it was delicious. And uh, and so all we had to wor- all we had to worry about was playing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Still on the gig topic. Mm. Any update? A quick? Any quick update from the Nottingham gig the that was Nottingham... cancelled? Uh, you are no. not aware. George went to have a gig in Nottingham. It got cancelled the day before for a mental reason. And you are now in a fight to get your money. Well, yeah, exactly. And I think all I know is that they tried emailing her, and the bride that is and uh everything but no luck so it looks like we're going down the legal route and uh i think as it stands the ox mm-hmm. has been um just you know talking to musicians union and stuff like that just to see what we should go for basically saying do we go for the full fee including like travel and hotel or do we go because we're saying like they might I don't know, a lawyer or someone might go, well, you you haven't lost out there because you didn't travel, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll keep you posted. But I did look her up this morning just on a whim because I was like, I want to look her up just to see, you know. And she did get married and it looked, it looked ruddy expensive, to be honest. I mean, we were looking mm. at some of the decorations. We were like, that probably costs more than our fee. And she just, got them at a day's notice. Yeah, well, this is, yeah, exactly. I smell bullshit. And, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, that'll be a little ongoing saga. Yeah, we'll keep that. I look forward to the posted. court transcripts. That's our mini series. <laughs> yeah. Our first mini series. It's this uh, podcast, and I've got an arc. Segwaying, keeping it on the uh, decade gig. Yeah. I went to Anderton's for the first That's time. That's right. Ever. So, yeah, the boiler room is just down the road from Anderton's in Guildford. Yeah. A, a music Which, shop. Uh, yeah, I've always heard of it. Because everyone, everyone that lives in Guildford almost has to say how great it is. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like the only thing there is in Guildford. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because in the kindest way, it I don't know. It doesn't seem like that much of a buzzing Guildford city. didn't thrill me. No, <laughs> exactly. So whenever you meet someone from Guildford, they're like, oh, have you been to Anderton's though? ACM. You know, all this stuff. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I was like, I should probably go. And while I was there, I bought a new pair of drumsticks Whoa. which are a different size to what I'm used to. Okay. So, so was, you yeah, were on the Vic, you were using Vic Fair f- five A's? I was. But I actually sure. was I was in there going to buy a pair of five B's. Just because Yeah. This this new well are they like the five B's are the same length but they're just slightly thicker. Just slightly thicker. And I was thinking about it and I was like I used to play with them all the time, 
and I sh- you know you always feel like you're hitting it harder with a mm-hmm. heavier stick there's a pair of sticks at your studio in the storeroom called Vic Firth rock sticks yeah. I don't know if you've ever played with them you feel like it's like every hit you're like this is gonna break a drum so it does make a difference anyway they didn't have any five b's so i went for uh, three a's there are three a's and i used to have a pair yeah yeah, vic firth and i used to have a pair of veta three a's because i heard that's what matt helder's arctic monkeys uses so i was like i gotta get them um you say veta i say vata do you say vata yeah why isn't it it's, yeah, I know, but there's no R. Surely it'd be Varta if it's V A. Well, I don't know. I take it as like a German sort of Varta. <laughs> Is it a German company? Don't know. Or would you just give it a German accent? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm looking it up. Yeah, go on. You, talking, while you look it up, I'll, I'll, I'll carry on with the uh, stick thing. So I said to the guy, got any 5Bs or 5As? He goes, no, this, that's literally all we got. We've got that pair there. I said, okay, fine. I'll take them. Go on. Your eyes have lit up. Uh, American. <laughs> I I'm pretty sure it's Veta. Yeah, probably is. Uh, if if you were American, how would you say it? Let us know. Get, Get some... in touch. <laughs> like our reaches that far. <laughs> Need to find a video you... of them. I don't know if someone, we've got someone Northern England yet. Someone announcing it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, go on. See if I can. By the way, let's keep all of this in and uh, not edit any of this out. And I'm not going to talk. Vater, yeah, cool. Yeah, fair enough. No, it's okay. I like to. I like to sometimes I've say. I've never words. heard it. I've never. It's one of them things. I'd never yeah. heard it said before. So you just. I like to sometimes deliberately say words wrong, just mm. to see if anyone catches out on it. You know, like I'll say things like, "Well, if it's any constellation," <laughs> and they're like, "I think he just said <laughs> constellation." Too, I, a few weeks ago, Baz. Mentioned he said Toyota Prius. Yeah, and well, I was like, I've in, I've noticed you said Prius there, and he said, what, "What is it?" And I said, "Well, I think it's Prius." Yeah, and it was that one. He's like, "I've never really heard anyone say it, so I don't." Mm. We uh, I think we all agreed it was Prius, but it could be Prius. Don't yeah, know. don't yeah. know. An old mate of mine used to say Primark instead of Primark. Sure. And, uh, and you've, always, you've got the classic Adidas, 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 Nike, Matt Groening, Nike. Matt Groening. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a lot. Potato, potato. <laughs> Let's call the whole thing off. Yeah. So anyway, I get these free A Vic Furbs, <laughs> <laughs> and they're weird because they're thicker, but they seem lighter than five A's. Um, okay. And I'm thoroughly enjoying it. But I don't. Right, here's here's a mental thing which is so drum specific. If you don't play drums, switch off two minutes if you want i'd right this sounds mental i swear the longer you play a stick it gains more weight and it can't literally gain more weight but if you if you just right picture in your mind a new pair of drumsticks they feel like i've got them i've got them right in my mind right yeah i can picture them they feel light however imagine them all you know where they get kind of like darker in color because of all the sweat and whatever on your hands, mm-hmm. they somehow feel heavier. I don't know what it is because okay. obviously they're not gaining weight because that would be mental. But isn't it weird when you get a new pair of sticks and they just you just feel like oh I can I can do more now rather than well I feel pair. the opposite to you then. Do you? I feel when I get a new pair of sticks, I'm like oh these are heavier than the really? same sticks that are a bit used. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting. I think because I'm just all power on the rim shot, I've obviously chipped away a bit. Like, well, that's what that's yeah. A word. Maybe there's something to do with like the sweat and natural mm. oils from skin soaking into the base of the stick that that does just add a bit of I don't it, know. Yeah, because I don't know. Maybe it's because it's like, feel. like you'd think wetter wood is heavier than dry wood. Yeah. So maybe there's some sort of that oil can or skin or sweat just get in there and just makes maybe the wood a bit heavier. But I guess the only way I'd try would be to just weigh a pair when you get them. Some do really you think there's like, is this? Do you notice that when you're actually playing the drum? I or think just, so. Just picking them up. Do you know what it is? I uh, oh, because I've just thought of a little theory that I might be wrong because it Go is on. very different if you've been playing sticks for. A pair of sticks for a while and then you mm. they're getting frayed and whatever and then you buy a new pair of sticks they do feel incredibly different 
even though they're the same size. Mm. And for me, they feel heavier, but I'm wondering whether there's something to do with the fact that you've not, because they're unused, it's almost like like the 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 friction on where the stick sits between your thumb and finger is a different feeling between the new and the like, yeah. the new one and the old one and so maybe are you find maybe for you it's like there's less friction so it yeah. feels like you can yeah get the stick around quicker and maybe for me it feels like there's more i don't mm. know like it feels different cuz it's it's like old i feel like old sticks i'm not going to get a blister but new yeah. sticks i am yeah mm. it, that, that wood hasn't been worn with natural skin oil or just friction and movement mm. so i don't know whether it's like some, something else or maybe it's like partly psychological like i think that's what i was going to say because i don't know if you ever feel this but if you if you dress better i always feel like i can play drums better if i'm dressed better than if I'm not, you know, like if I, I once bought this jacket and it was a really nice jacket, this bomber jacket, and I got behind a kit and I was like, I, I swear I'm a better drummer now, which is <laughs> yeah. mental. Yeah. It's psychological. So maybe it's a bit of that. Maybe it's like it's not feeling lighter. It's feeling like, oh, this is I, oh, this is new. Or like yeah, new skins, and like, and, and, you know, new sticks like make a it all makes a difference to how you yeah. play. Yeah, you know, playing with fresh sticks, you're like, oh, I've got fresh sticks. Like yeah fresh gear you're like even anything new on a drum new skin new hardware new symbol you're like yeah. oh yeah it gives you a little oh totally boots because drums are just things that just they just degrade like mm. you know they just need maintaining mm. so you play it until it gets worn and broken and then you re you replace it to just keep it at that same standard yeah and getting new sticks maybe it's like oh right, okay yeah definitely and it just makes you feel like, ooh, yeah. right, I'm fresh. Yeah, exactly. And uh, speaking of maintaining, I've started practicing properly for the first time. Ever? Uh, Ever? I don't know, it's weird, right? It feels like the first time, like, doing it seriously and i'm thoroughly enjoying it because what i used to do you know like since leaving uni i never really i don't know unless i had a gig and i was like right i need to learn these songs i never went out of my way to be like i need to work on this i need to i, I didn't know what the holes were in my playing and obviously i've started lessons with pat garvey which are going great and it's like we kind of started slowly. He was like, just do 10 minutes a day or like 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening of this stuff. That's all you need to do. But he's been giving me more stuff to learn and I've kind of spent as much time on each bit as every other bit. So it's just got longer and longer. And now I, I practice for about an hour a day now and it is just like practice. And I think the difference is before I'd be like, I wouldn't know what I'm doing, you know? And I'd, you know, even in like, last few years i try and be like oh i need to practice what should i practice and i get like a drum book and i'd be like okay well let's let's do this page let's see how fast i can play it of like i don't know rudiments or single stroke with accents and then i'd be like okay i'll come back to that tomorrow and play it at a faster bpm and then i might i might not and then before long i just stop and it's that consistency thing because it's sort of like I don't know. It, the only way I can describe it is almost like how I used to do exercise. I do one massive run and be like, brilliant, and then not run again for the next month. Mm. Whereas it's better to do like a couple of short runs a week. And then when it all adds up to the end of the month, you've done a lot. And it's like that with drum practice. It's like before I was trying to do it all at once and being like, I don't know what to do. And now I'm like, I just do this and I just do that. And then it's done. And then you've done it for the day. I'll just I mean, what, say this already. It's like, fuck, why wasn't I doing this before? And obviously mm. everyone feels like that. Cause it's like, I think until you're really like, I need to level up, you won't level up because you'll be like, I'm fine. Yeah. You know, like that's how I felt. I was like, I've got these gigs and this is enough, you know, but there'll be like a switch and you're like, Oh, how do I get to the next thing? And, um, but it's, it's nice. Cause I'm finally starting to feel solid because this whole summer, I'll say one more thing, every function gig I did, I'd finish it and be like, I don't feel like I nailed that. 
Mm-hmm. And and I talk, I talked to the rest of the band and be like, sorry, I was a bit off. And they were like, no, it sounded all right. I'm like, nah, it wasn't like to me. It was like, yeah, everything felt sloppy. And uh, yeah, and it's it's exciting because it's making me, for one, I'm enjoying practice, which is weird because it's you know it's usually laborious in anything you do, you know, even if you enjoy what it is. But it's it's nice because it's like, oh, I know this is like a thing that I wasn't doing and I can improve. You know, say if I was practicing before and I wasn't progressing, I'd be like, well, what am I doing wrong? But it's like it, I can so pinpoint it. It's like, how do I get to the next thing? It's like, well, how often do you practice? Like, never. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, do that, you know? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's 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 nice, but um, but it's weird to kind of talk about that on a drum podcast. And you know, act like you know what you're on about with drums, and then say, "I don't." Oh, practice. I mean, we know nothing. Yeah, <laughs> well, is, I, and I think that's yeah. been made abundantly clear over the previous fifty odd weeks or whatever. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, yeah, I I don't really practice. Mm. Like at gigs, I'll I'll be like, if it's just boring and shit, it's like I'll just try and really, I'll focus, try and focus on something like make sure I hit the kick and the crash clean. Yeah. You know, make sure I'm you know those things like make sure yeah. if it's a four to the floor like just be conscious of like getting the kick and the snare down at the same time but mm. i think the key from my point of view and what you've just said i think a, a few key elements are one practice is great mm. but you've got to practice the right stuff yeah 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 yeah. and and i'm gonna hark back to my classical trombone days again mm. but my professor you know there was this whole expectation like oh you've got to practice like six hours a day yeah and my trombone professor was like, you don't. Yeah. The people who practice, they're not practicing the right stuff. He's like, if you no. practice the right stuff, you only need to do two. Yeah. Max. Yeah. And he said, what people fell into the common trap of doing is they just felt because I'm playing lots, that counts as practice. Mm. But it doesn't. And they're like, what you tend to do is you, you know, let's say you're doing a concerto or something. Mm. You, you just play through the bits you know. Because yeah. it makes you feel better. Because you're like, I can play these bits. It's like, you can play it, so you don't need to practice that. Yeah. You need to practice that two bars, which you kind of just blag your way through a bit. Mm. Start with that. Just yeah. do that. Yeah. Just do that. Yeah. And actually, if you practice the right things, and I mentioned before the old juggling balls, like being aware of all those things that you mm. need to be conscious of, posture, breathing, wrist, you know, your wrist, all, all mm. these things, and you can quickly pinpoint them. But if you just focus on practicing the stuff you can't do but you practice efficiently mm. then you you save a lot of time yeah and so then it doesn't become laborious yeah exactly because, and then if you're practicing the things you can't play well then you're gonna get better yeah but there's no point like if we were to do drum practice there's no point like oh i'll practice playing mr bright side well that's not mm. gonna do you any good no but i'm gonna practice my how i hit the drum yeah for just 20 minutes yeah that's gonna have an impact on the whole set you know, yeah. the whole f- future. And, and like you say, and you're doing the right things by just practicing those key little things. And Pat will be guiding you on these for a yeah. very good reason. And it's like, you're not practicing. I think it's different. It's maybe I, maybe you could say like, there is, a, there is a time where you're like, okay, you've got a gig coming up and you don't know the songs. Like you've got to practice those songs. Mm. But it's almost, you could phrase that, like you've got to rehearse playing those songs. Mm. But practice would be in the nitty gritty of the technique yeah and things and it would be something that you physically can't play that you need to slow down and build up and all that sort of thing so efficiency of practice is key yeah because it's all very well going i did four hours practice it's like but did you do anything that's going to benefit you yeah in the long run is that actually 20 minutes of doing the right thing will have much more impact yeah then um, and that and that hour that I'm on about, uh, as in that's a literal hour, it probably actually takes me like an hour and a half to do it. But that hour is like, it's 10 minutes of tap strokes and then it's five minutes of this right hand thing and then five minutes is that and then it all adds up. Um, I think the other thing I'll say about it with practice, it's like the first time I'm practicing in terms of like treating it like a muscle and treating it like how you would if you're preparing for a race or just trying to stay fit. And that feeling of like, like, and it's the first time I'm thinking about it, not in a musical sense. I'm not thinking, oh, I'm trying to become a better musician. I'm just going, oh, I'm trying to just do this. So just it's physically more Physically be a better drummer. Physically be a better drummer. And it's that thing of, it's that thing of, if you talk to any personal trainer, they'll say, 
whatever your workout is you got to do just get it done and then once it's done you're done for the day and then you can do whatever you want do you know what i mean and it's kind of like that with drum practice you can kind of put it aside because you're like oh do i but it's it's so nice having something and going okay once i've done this even if i don't do anything drum related for the rest of the day i've done that and that's way more than i used to and that will you know add to it and like a um, lot of those things it it's you won't see the effect immediately but if you keep no. doing it then you'll be yeah. like oh shit that was yeah. played really well because yeah. all those little things have just built up and you're just retraining your brain and your muscles to to factor in all these little you know elements mm. um, but i also think that you're you know you're saying like oh you've not really practiced before and now mm. you are and well, it, it hits you at different ages, mm. that will to learn and that yeah. will to get better. And I think that does tend to sort of come, can come with age. Yeah. You know, from a studio perspective, it's like Neil particularly, mid-30s, and he's like, I'm so pumped more than ever to yeah. learn my craft. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And maybe similar with yourself, you're now like, you've had a great career so far, mm. and you're like, well, if I want it to go further and to just do it for the next 40 years, yeah, I need to get myself bang up to speed. Yeah. Because, and I think just in general, as you get older, you want to learn more. Yeah. You just like, oh, and I, I've thought this before. It's like, fucking hell, why did, if I could do music college again mm. with my hat on now, yeah. I mean, I, you'd do it so much, so you'd do yeah. so much more work and have yeah. so much more respect for it, I think, for. Mm where you are but when you're 18 i mean yeah your, your priorities are so split between studying and just having a good time yeah but, you know, but i take older and wiser you're like oh yeah fucking hell do you i mean you did you know you did a fucking iron man and like learn yeah. to swim yeah do you think that's influenced you a hundred percent yeah a hundred percent i almost wasn't gonna so you're like it. oh i could do that and that took right. hours of training. This is that exactly... took hours of training and learning how, you know, one of the yeah. elements you had to learn how to do from scratch. Yeah. And that took hours of training. You did, And you're like, you know, I've had this before. Like, why, why don't I just fucking spend yeah. that time doing yeah. the thing I actually do for a fucking job? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I didn't really tell anyone, like, the reason I did the Iron Man because it seemed a bit cheesy. But it was genuinely, like, I didn't feel like I was in a good... Not in a... a press place or anything but i didn't feel like i was in a place where i was like happy with like the way my drumming career was going and stuff i was like i need to do something that i'm like when i'm 70 if i get that old or 80 i can be like well i did that that was cool you know and the iron man was that thing but it was like it when you go for something like that you do sort of learn like as i said but when i talked about it like you do have to just keep throwing yourself in the water and the thing about it to put it bluntly there was no money gain from it there was no like i'm not an athlete i'm not trying to be an athlete whereas put yourself down mate (laughs) but i am trying to be a drummer and i'm like god if i put that much work (laughs) into drumming as i did into swimming i just did half of that (laughs) yeah exactly into drumming and and i genuinely think it when i'm practicing and i'm like well i'm not swallowing seawater so this is actually (laughs) far easier but um i I know what you gotta do (laughs) <laughs> take your sticks in the sea yeah, exactly but no last thing i'll say it was it's like it, it has sort of changed my whole mindset about um like my career and stuff because it was like i was thinking before like that was what i was getting down about i was like why have i not done those gigs that i want to do how do i get to that place and i was worrying about the wrong things you know i was like thinking about things that are out of my control it's like why is why why is he not asking me to play a gig and why is he and then it's just like, forget all of that, because that's out of your control. Just focus on getting better. If I just focus on being a better drummer, then it kind of doesn't matter. And now I kind of don't care as much. I'm like, do you know what? I'm just going to get as good as I know I can get and then do the gigs I have, you know? Because it's yeah. like, it's not like I'm not doing any gigs, you know, I'm doing bits and bobs. And it's like, and hopefully then when I do the gigs, it will be like, this is genuinely the plan. And it's, you know, I haven't really even said it out loud, but like, then the opportunities will come up, you know, if I'm more ready for it, you know, because I was thinking about it, there might have been so many times where I played a gig with someone and they could have been looking for a drummer and they were like, that he wasn't that good though. Do you know what I mean? I'll leave yeah. it. And it's like, but if I get to that next level and it, you know, if you put the work in, 
things happen you know what i mean you know yeah. it with the studio it's like it's you know the more work you put in you're like oh wow this band's coming back and i can do this more and i can do you know it opens doors and it's so it's exciting it's like yeah it's it's like a switch is you know and i think finding as well like having that essentially essentially a mentor you know yeah, someone that yeah, can yeah, guide yeah. you and and that's the thing like you you going back and having lessons with pat like you are a drummer and <clears throat> you've been doing it for a while now but mm. there's no I think it was that thing when like Woody said, Oh, I go back and have lessons and you're yeah. like, But you're the drummer in Bastille, like Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, well no, he's he's gotta be yeah. he's gotta be in top if if anyone's gotta be in top form, it's people yeah, yeah, like yeah. him. Yeah, you know. Totally. And with the studio, me and Neil, you know, a good few years ago, six years ago, we were like, We're pretty good, but there's we've got no direction like no one's mm. there's no how do we get better? We don't know. And then we found um Stephen Slate. And that put us on a real path. And you can go listen to the new Mixforge podcast where we talk about all that that journey. But we found that kind of mentor and that path yeah. to go down that that inspired us and made us get better. And it's and that was, you know, at age thirty one. Mm. Okay, mm. right. Now I'm more pumped to get better yeah. at mixing and really learn and really study and train my ears to get better and and do that. And so I think it can yeah there's, there's no shouldn't be like an age thing that stops you from no either refinding that or finding that work ethic yeah because i think just naturally it ebbs and flows yeah but when you and, and like you said like practice isn't when you're a kid and you've got to do your practice you know between your weekly lessons it's like oh i've got to practice yeah at that age you don't understand why you don't understand no. what you're doing and what why you're practicing those things and now uh, yeah now you're i think practice is only shit if you're not doing it right and you're, yeah. you're not fully if you if you don't want to do it it's shit yeah but getting to that point where that switch clicks and you're like right i want to be good yeah i want to yeah, yeah. be better yeah then practice isn't a chore no because you you know why you're doing it you know the goal with it exactly and like like you know yeah like your iron man mm. like you, there's a goal there and it's, yeah. a, it's a slightly different thing because it culminates in that race yeah but it's like you can't just do an iron man without training no no <laughs> you know and and so one last thing i keep saying this but ben thomas said it on our chat he said you know he started lessons with pat at age 20 and he was like why didn't i do this before Pat was like, because you weren't ready. And I said exactly, weirdly enough, I said exactly the same thing. Uh, I was like, why didn't I do this before? He's like, because you weren't, you know, you weren't yeah, it'd yeah. be like you could have taken them, but you wouldn't have, you know, um, carried on with it. And yeah, it's, it, that is it in a nutshell. You've got to have a, a reason why. And if you don't, then you won't. I just want to go back to drumsticks. Yeah. Because this is something you showed me oh yeah the other week and it was the vic firth drumsticks you had at the time the five a's yeah. now, now you're a three a fancy <laughs> pants changing man. yeah he's a changing boy shit's changing look what this that podcast is. has done to you you're now practicing drums <laughs> it's Fucking really hell, bad because that is so literally... bad <laughs> it's began <laughs> It's almost like we started the podcast and then went, oh, shit, we should, we should learn. Probably. <laughs> I, I do wonder, you know, anyone who listens to this, some people mm. obviously know us. Mm. Maybe there's some people who listen who don't know us yeah. personally. Yeah. And, like, we could be shit at yeah. drums. <laughs> like, it's not, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think we've ever posted footage of us playing or anything. No. Are people going, but then obviously, like, we're not the best drummers in the world. That no. is clear. Far from it. But I wonder if people go, are they even actually any good? <laughs> Probably yeah. not. Well, I won't name names at all, and we'll go back to the drumstick thing in a sec, but there's certain drummers out there who make a name for doing great things within the drum community, but then you watch them play, and they're not the best players. But, you know, they do a lot for dr other drummers and, you know, making the you know the drumming world go around so it's kind of okay but the yeah. best football managers weren't the best players yeah exactly you know yeah and we're not the best drummers but 
I mean, we're not even the best podcasters either. This is, <laughs> should we just try? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can't do a drum. Maybe if we just talk about drums. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So this was Vic Firth Sticks. And they've got an American flag on them. Yeah. And what did you say? Sabine? Well, so I learned this, I think, on my first lesson back with Pat. That's where you put your thumb. Put your thumb on the flag. And, Blew my uh, mind. Yeah. I've because been using then, Vic Sticks for years. Yeah, exactly. And, and then that's the way you in... get the perfect proportion of handle exactly. and top. Yeah. And now whenever I start to play, it's before I do anything, I just thumb on the flag and then I begin. Right, I've got it. a pair of... Oh, no, these don't have the flag on them. Yeah, I already knew. I was like, he's going to get a pair of Novas. No, I haven't got one with me. But yeah, <laughs> I, I since you told me that, actually, I haven't even yeah. checked that. But I want to just pick a stick up where I'd naturally... Mm. Should I go and get one? Yeah, get a pair. Right. That's all right, we've got we'll time. Back. I'm back. Uh, we're, we're recording this in the evening, which is weird. So I'm actually it at work weird. at the moment. Yeah. So, but no one's disturbing me. So I just went upstairs. Oh, I'm so unfit. I need to do an <laughs> Man, I've got my... This is a pretty fresh... Yeah. Vic Firth. That's lovely. 5A, American classic. Mm. Hickory, hickory. Hickory Dock. Dock. Dixon of Dock Green. Bishop (laughs) Buzzawayra. Right, I can see the flag. So I'm not going to look at the flag. I'm not going to look at the flag. Oh, okay, right. And I'm just going to hold the drumstick where I naturally would. That feels like where I'd... Mm. (laughs) It should be a a gif. A gif. Yeah. Right. And now I'm just going to look and rotate. Yeah. That's where my thumb is. Yeah. I'll screenshot that. <laughs> so I'm under the flag. You're under the flag. The tip of my thumb tickles the bottom of the flag. Mm. So I'm a, probably a centimetre too low. Yeah. So let me move up. Okay. Yeah. But it's funny, isn't it? Because I used to hold it way too low and then i found i spoke to him about this pat when i'd play my hand would sometimes just go down the stick thankfully apparently that's quite a common thing but it was yeah. still like yeah i'd, I'd notice and i'd be like god where's that where's that going you know so i yeah, think i used to it like that yeah 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 i used to hold it way too low but um yeah I, oh i'll say one more thing this is the last thing uh that i was going to say earlier in terms of like practice practice and then moving it to like gig or rehearsal or a musical situation so i was talking to him about this because i was saying you know all this stuff what we're initially doing is correcting my wrists because my wrists were just so fucked up it was surprising i could even play the drums the way they were and we're sort of just you know getting the wrists in the right place and i said like well when are we going to move this into like playing beats you know, because we're, we're putting the wrist in the right place, but we're just doing tap strokes and um, things like that. And uh, he was like, for now, don't worry about it. He was like, if you do a gig or a rehearsal, all you should do is say you do an hour rehearsal at 50 minutes in, you might remember and you might go, oh, my wrist is the fucked up way it always was. Turn it back and then you might just immediately go back to how it was, you know, and, ju- you know. And uh, he said it would just, it will slowly change. And he said it was just interesting because it's like, you know, the change will take a few months to get the technique yeah. right. And it will feel weird. And it will feel like you can't play because you're like, this is all, but it's changing. And uh, yeah, it's just quite interesting. It's like everything's being relearned, you know. Being rebuilt like Robocop. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, something like that. Yeah. Or like having braces or something, you know, it's like, it's going to hurt, but afterwards you'll have a, a lovely good smile. Like me. Exactly. Did you have braces? Big time. Yeah, so did I. I was like year eight. I had like train tracks. Did you? Yeah. I was, I was year 11. Definitely, definitely pleased I had them. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Um, We've been <laughs> chatting for quite a bit, mate. <laughs> so I yeah. think we should leave it there. Yeah. But I'm just going to finish with a listener email. Um, I didn't even know we had one. Yeah, well, I got it. It was sent to my personal account. Cause I oh, know okay, him. fair, fair. Yeah. So, and the reason I like this email, because <laughs> after your concern about my rant the other week... I was concerned. I got this email from Sean. Sean, if you're listening, hello, mate. 
Can I just um, say I was concerned because it lasted about forty-five minutes. I yeah, like, I cut might... twenty-five minutes out <laughs> of it, if not more. Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. we'll release the unedited version. Yeah. <laughs> maybe when we finally get cancelled. Yeah, I'll just go fuck well it. Is the episode? Yeah, is the whole thing. I'm effing and Jeffing and <laughs> dropping names in all over the show. <laughs> anyway, Sean, uh, he said, hello, mate. I wanted to give you a standing ovation while driving in his car for your rant on Depp's just doing the homework or, um, on your podcast a few weeks back. So I just sort of, um, I, 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 I appreciated that. Yeah, well, it was funny because when I listened to the episode back, because I usually, when they go out, I listen to them when they go out. Sometimes I don't make it all the way through, and uh, <laughs> but most of the time I do. I stopped listening to them back through on about episode three. Yeah, well, you edit them. So yeah, I edit, like... so I've heard them. But um, yeah. but I listened to the rant, and I was like, no, 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 this does sound good. But when I was experiencing the rant, part Your of face. me was thinking, I was like, we can't put all of this out. This is a yeah. lot. This so, Sean, lot thanks for... Yes, for agreeing with the rat. Sean, like me, you know, is a is a bitter old. I'll say also, I think a lot of I had mates that agreed with it. They were like, "Yeah, I don't play in bands, but I get on that." You know, well, I hope some of your mates sense. take note. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't have friends that don't do their homework on gigs. But um, yeah, um, cool. I'll, uh, we'll put up a few. I got a few holiday snaps. We can get them up on the ground. Yeah, 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 big time. You know. I didn't really take many. I've been there before, so it's like it's the same <laughs> pool. It's the same road. I can't take another picture of a pina colada. Although I did find this shop called the Movie Vault, <laughs> right? Just quickly. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't open for like the first five days I was there. Right. And then it was open. I was like, okay, what's in here? Yeah. And it was just pop culture heaven. Mm. You know, Jurassic Park, Back to the Future, like merchandise and things. Yeah, yeah. And they had this display stand that wasn't for sale. And it had a signed hoverboard from Back right. to the Future, signed by uh, Michael J. Fox. Cool. And it had what my favourite, though, was a paper map of Isla Nubar from Jurassic Park, signed by Sam Neill. You well, know. there we go. Lovely. <clears throat> Who is Sam Neill? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> See you next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to Drum and Drummer. You can find us on Instagram at Drum and Drummer Podcast. And you can send us an email to drumandrummerpod at gmail.com. Remember, just pick up the sticks and twat it.